Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut 11. This is Kathy speaking. I hope that you're all doing well. And uh, welcome to the messenger is here on a very, very important day. Today is February 5th, um, Greek time. So I'm here to do a reading as Mercury is on top of Pluto at that zero degrees of Aquarius, which is a very, very big deal. And this is only the beginning of, and it's a new phase. Um, it's something we've never experienced before, obviously, as last year when Pluto um, entered Aquarius for about two and a half months in March until June of 2023, the uh, personal planets Mercury, Venus and Mars had passed um, the Aquarius part of our charts already. So now this is Pluto at the zero degree, which is a very important degree. We do talk about it on Patreon a lot. So if you're interested, um, consider joining us, joining our tribe. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see because Mercury is the first... Um, uh, personal planet uh, after the sun that has conjoined Pluto at that zero degrees of Aquarius. Very, very important for uh, obviously Aquarius, Leo, which is right opposite Taurus and Scorpio for the fixed signs that are born in the first uh, couple of days, two, three days. Okay, they're the ones that are going to be affected more so, but we've all got those fixed signs areas in our chart somewhere. So um, we're going to have so much going on in the astrology. February is a very, very, very important month indeed pertaining to the astrology. So what can Mercury on Pluto mean? Mercury is communication. It's our perception. It's how we think. It's how we communicate. It's how we travel. What means we have to travel to move, right? Anything that gives us a sense of mobility, the ability to also communicate, get across, get our point across, use our logic to others, you know, with others. Pluto is anything that's secretive. Now, it is, they are conjoining in the area of Aquarius, which Aquarius is groups and associations, right? It is futuristic, it is social media, it is politics. A lot of disclosures and things that were hidden are going to come to the surface. Be careful with your little pets. Be careful with your children. If you've got younger children, Mercury does signify um, children, uh, education, uh, little pets, also health. So there can also be not only disclosures, things, finding out about things that have been hidden, but also... Um, discoveries, right? Um, new techno uh, technological discoveries pertaining to health because of Mercury. Mercury rules Virgo as well, remember. Um, a lot to do with schooling, students, uh, teachers, um, a lot of uh, secrets pertaining to medicines, poisons, which is Pluto, riches, money. Mercury can speak to business, commerce, trade, right, journalism. So we're going to have a lot that's going to be revealed on a cosmic level, but also personally. So which area of your chart does Aquarius take up? Let's see what could be coming through. What does the messenger want to bring us today? Thank you, spirit. What is the karma dharma around this time? And I do say today, but if you watch this a week down, you know, down the line, um, the message should be important for you. And um, and what did I want to say? What did I want to say? This is a brand new cycle, okay? This is a, a new cycle pertaining to Pluto and Mercury. For those of you that are Mercury ruled, you're a Virgo or a Gemini, this is very important, apart from the... Um, the fixed signs that we spoke of. Um, but obviously it is, you know, uh, Aquarius is a, is, is a sign of intelligence. Mercury is very, very strong indeed. 
um, Aquarius, in Aquarius. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and that is the right side of the brain. Uh, Mercury is the left side, the logical side. So there's a lot of logic, a lot of intelligence, a lot of ingenious things that are going to be dug up. Remember, Pluto can also be subconscious, things that are hidden in the psyche. So pay attention to what sort of flashes you have. Um, yeah, which could also be signifying um, the period last year, March until June, what was going on for you back then. A lot of technology, AI, a lot of things that are going to change pertaining to uh, Mercury, Mercury transiting through Aquarius. We're going to have that sort of indication now, that information now, but this could also be a brand new opening cycle which can speak to a 20-year period which will be Pluto transiting through Aquarius. Let's see what's going on. What is the Kama Dharma, please, Spirit, as the moon is transiting through Sagittarius? Uh, being able to see that bigger picture. Mm. There is a sense of optimism today with the moon, which is our emotions. Um, as the lovers are moving through Capricorn, Venus and Mars, they're moving through Capricorn and they're preparing to, to connect with um, Pluto, the god of the underworld. A metamorphosis is happening. Someone sees the light. This could be anything to do with healing, emotional, physical healing as well because of the hermit which brings up Virgo. Virgo does speak to service. Our work, it rules the natural sixth house. Our pets, right? Someone sees the light. This could be wisdom, inner wisdom or wisdom coming from, uh, a, you know, a philosopher, an astrologer, a tarot reader, uh, anyone, a doctor, um, a someone who carries the wisdom nevertheless someone who is a professional um, this could be not only uh, you know um, a doctor uh, this could be a specialist that's what I'm trying to get to anything to do with our psyche anything to do with emotional physical healing as well we may also have breakthroughs breakthroughs where um, any disease or illness pertaining to the mind is concerned um, and we've seen a lot of that ever since ever since you know the lockdowns and the beginning of 2020 um, which has um, been very very emotionally challenging um, and you know we've all had to sort of turn inwards looking for our path forward remember this is a nine so we're almost at the end of that. And a Virgo is all about service. It's collaborating with others. It's your daily uh, routine. It's your bad habits. It could be a, a time when you will get the necessary information on how to break a bad habit, something that is unhealthy, whether it's relational, whether it's physical, your diet, exercise, all these things come through. Trust your intuition. We've got High Priestess, which is... Pisces of Pisces Virgo again speaks to the physical body, the emotional body, the psychological body. There's something that we will possibly be celebrating here. Now, this could also speak to um, um, coming together with others, sharing ideas, um, finding out information, things that were hidden. The High Priestess is Pisces. Pisces is the twelfth natural house. It could speak to endings to solitude it could speak to endings to a karmic cycle therefore the beginning as a conjunction is also it is an ending and a new beginning right and we've got mercury conjuncting pluto this is like an important seed that is planted now and this could be um, esoteric power the information coming from our higher selves from our you know third eye the um, a connection to spirit to the divine look out for signs and synchronicities now the high priestess could also be things that were hidden 
but also uh, I do see her many times as a third party. The other woman, if we're looking at relationships, Three of Cups can also speak to third parties. Pisces is also secret love affairs. So all these things could come through at this time. This could be a new way to heal, whether it's a physical, a physical means, emotional means, all these things could come through. We do see happiness possible, happiness here at something that is going to come through. Three of Cups could be um, a group that you socialize with, uh, siblings, friendships. Pay attention. Uh, there could be a, like a message that comes through when you least expect it. It could come through from others. Um, that will show you the light, even though you're not looking for it. It's like something that you're meant to know, to see, to be enlightened about. Okay, so let's see what the messenger is bringing us. Today, 5th of February. Uh, happy birthday if you're celebrating your birthday. Let's see what's going on, dear spirit. What does the messenger bring us? We have temperance, which is the um, energy of Sagittarius, therefore Jupiter. Temperance speaks to healing, um, but also um, a necessity to be patient with yourself, patient with others. Um, there's an alchemy going on. And yes, this could be medicinal, whether it's emotionally happening or physically. There's something to do with healing. Remember that temperance comes after a, the death card, Scorpio, which Pluto rules. Hmm. And also remember that Jupiter is, um, Jupiter is in um, Taurus, in a Venusian sign. Um, so that speaks to our physical body, our resources as well, but also... Um, self-worth, feeling worthy, feeling stable. Um, there's a lot going on pertaining to relationships, contracts and commitments as we are looking at um, these matters, whether it's a commitment for work or whether it's, you know, um, a contract or a marriage. Um, as Juno is retrograding through Virgo, right? So the next few months will be very important pertaining to our contracts uh, relative to the service that we provide, if it's work, or even being there, being motherly. Remember, Virgo is very motherly, um, is there for everyone, but can also be discerning. Has there been reciprocity or has there been only sacrifice from the area of your Virgo, um, area of your chart? because Virgo Pisces comes through and a lot of mutable, mutable, yes, mutable signs. So mutable means transmutation and change and Pluto is also change. Let's see what's going on. Wow, we've got a potential for a brand new beginning, something very stable, an opportunity here. Is it for security, for stability, for money, um, for a possible new contract? a new home, um, a new beginning that brings security um, pertaining to the materialistic side of things. So real things, not things imagined, right? This is an offering. This is a potential. This is an opportunity that comes through for something that could start that will be long term. More money, a uh, higher position at work. What is this? I mean, someone has seen the light or is seeing the light. And remember Venus and Mars, they are in Earth. We're talking about Earth. So things becoming more, more stable, more um, foundational, more based in reality. We've got Jupiter, Uranus through moving through Taurus. We're going to have surprises, big surprises, big turns and changes, a lot of freedom pertaining to uh, the past where we felt more blocked. Uh, Aquarius is about being detached 
uh, finding a way to set ourselves free. We've been very patient. Maybe money or a new opportunity is setting you free. Even where health is concerned, right? There's an alchemy, which is like uh, something medicinal is happening. Something is being uh, turned from poison to elixir, to um, an ability to heal, turning that venom, that poison into a possibility of healing. So I'm going to say also, and this is what I say, what hasn't killed us is making us stronger. Whatever we've been through, it's like we're sort of, um, it's like we've got the ability to pass the test. We're transmuting and changing. Uh, maybe the position we were in, the situation we were in was more, uh, was heavy, was testing. I feel now in February, there are going to be such fundamental huge changes for all of us. It's like a new, a new day is dawning, a new cycle is opening up. And uh, where there was poison, where there was um, where there were limitations and um, we were like basking in basking in the challenges, the difficulties, right? Going through those Plutonian um, tests, um, going, you know, getting really deep, going into the psyche to see um, what changes we need to make as Pluto has left Capricorn and has ingressed into Aquarius. So it's a new phase in our lives. Obviously, new beginnings, huge new beginnings. It's like not wanting to look back, not being able to go back. And being sort of forced because, remember, Pluto could speak to control, being forced to look at it, the future and look at maybe things from a different perspective. Now, we've seen the light. We've found um, the ability. We've, we've researched. We've done our homework. We've dug deep which will give us an, a potential for a new beginning, what, whatever this is, okay? Even though maybe we may not see it fully right now, we need to believe that the way we're feeling now, it's the same. We share the same emotional position with other people in our lives, right? And humanity and uh, personally we're all going through fundamental changes i mean the five of pentacles remember shows uh, a church so it speaks to our beliefs maybe not being on the same ground with others concerning our beliefs but i feel that it's like jupiter is sh wanting to show us now and uranus moving through taurus a different way um letting go of the what we used to believe the way we used to look at things. It's like a new a new day is dawning and we're needing to go through changes, get unstuck. And that's what's going on pertaining to the fixed areas of our chart. Pluto is going to uns unstick us, um, get us moving. And not only Pluto, but Uranus through Taurus. Big changes in our money, big changes in our self-worth, in our securities, our resources, money, um, finances going up and down. It's like a very shaky, very transformational time that we're going through. We need to trust and we need to believe that we're all going through this. Um, even if we come from different beliefs, um, it's like we're all being tested individually. Remember, Aquarius is the individual within the group, within the society. So, there's, there are things that separate us, but there's more that brings us together with others. So that should be a little bit of, you know, a calming, um, a calming a bit of um, information that we need to uh, know, right? And Pluto obviously will bring um, 
big, huge changes to society, to humanity, to communities. Things are changing on all levels, my dear friends. We need to run with the changes. Run with the punches, I'm going to say. Remember, the next step is Jupiter, and Jupiter is starting to pick up pace, obviously, through Taurus. Um... Obviously, we've got, maybe there are also things that we are not aware of, blessings that Jupiter is bringing that we are not aware of, which I feel we will come to that awareness as Venus and Mars will pass over Pluto um, and then they will conjoin, the lovers will come together. So February being a very, very important month. We've got justice, so Libra, which speaks to partnerships, relationships, karma, Another card of balance. This speaks to imbalance. It is a five, but if we add them together, where monetary, uh, real life things are go, you know, are happening, there is the opportunity here for change, even if we may not see it yet. Um, justice is a major arcana, and yes, we're needing to let go of, you know, the South Node in Libra relationships that are not equal, that haven't been. Uh, bearing fruit okay so and we've all been going through an open wound Chiron on the north node in Aries we've all been looking for a resolution and that key to resolve to break free to uh, open up those doors those limitations okay it could be physical wounds it could be emotional wounds it could be practical matters or anything to do with a new cycle, even where negative thinking is concerned, okay? Yeah, negative thinking, nine of swords, nine of swords, a lot of anguish, stress, sleepless nights, fears, fears, surely, and dilemmas. Choices that need to be made, ten of cups, this is a cycle that's ending, but this dilemma speaks to a family, it speaks to a possible marriage, an ending of a cycle, the potential of a new beginning within a, an existing uh, family situation, marriage, or even just emotional bliss and happiness. There, we're still dealing with dilemmas and February is going to be a very important time. We've got the thief, the seven of swords here. A lot of things that were unknown. This is stealth. This is secrecy. This is also maybe tact, intelligence. And I'm going to say also um, um, how, what's the word I'm looking for? I can never um, remember. Being diplomatic, being diplomatic um, to find peace, to find serenity, we need to um, we need to be diplomatic where relationships, partnerships are concerned. Um, now, if and where diplomacy is not an option, this is what will probably may also bring the change. Because swords can be very cutting. They could be dark thoughts. They could be um, challenging communication, right? This is like not having the information. We've got a seven, a nine, and a two of swords. Not easy. Um, and the page of swords. Lots to do with communication, information, um, things being found out, things coming to light, things that were hidden, right? This could be information pertaining to a child or to children on a collective scale remember this turns into the ace of cups a possible new beginning but it does speak to an ending for the ability for that new beginning um there's the death card which i spoke about so lots of changes lots of endings possibly also because we've got Gemini, Gemini is needing to make decisions. It's like being in two minds. So this is the way we communicate, the information that's been um, 
I don't know, I'm getting recycled, going over and over something. Um, it's our perception, it's the way we communicate, it's it's decisions around um, education, um, collaboration and business, things to do with siblings, um, business, business-related decisions as well. Uh, uh, what can I say? There's so much um, that we could be going over and over about. Um, but we're seeing some light here. Let's see what the Lenormand communicates to us and advises. This could be, because we're not reading reversals, we've got uh, two cards of uh, balance, right? We've got the 11 and we've got the 2. But 2s always speak to um, harmony, balance, choices, okay, and decisions, but also possible separation, divorce, breaking free. Yeah, we've got a cycle, a cycle, a heavy cycle that someone's been carrying, or a commitment or a contract which has been quite heavy, or this is a spiritual union possibly. Could be a secret one as well with the um, the moon. Now, it's interesting. We're going to have a new moon in Aquarius on the 10th. Today is the 5th, so in about five days, which is going to be in a difficult uh, connection to Uranus. So challenging things that will show up, um, that will um, bring information, uh, enlightenment, tower moments. It's not going to be an easy um month it's not an easy month i will not um you know paint over uh, a picture that is not real a lot of changes that will take us off certain paths um, where we were stuck where um, we sacrificed too much in the sacrifice the love was not returned the nurturing the security was not returned okay so big big changes that will get us uncomfortable the moon, um, the moon does speak to secrecy, possibly also a hidden connection, secrets within a marriage. Um, the moon does speak to the mother, but it can also speak to uh, someone's personal life. Now we've got the bouquet here, which could be an offer. We've got the lily, and the lily speaks to purification. It's like Mother Mary. It speaks to... Uh, Morality, ethics, it's the Virgo energy. Again, purification, doing the ethical thing, um, being there, nurturing, loving. There is an offer on the table. We've got the bouquet. And uh, the bouquet is also Jupiterian. So there are there is potential here for something that's been going through a crisis, heaviness, that will be revealed. And we've got a divine masculine, the Mars, a Mars, Mars ruled person. Could be Scorpio, could be, could be Aries, but could also be someone that's very driven. Uh, this could be a, you know, a potential, um, a potential offer that comes through. A revisiting a cycle, even though all the planets are direct, we've still got Juno that's retrograding. So there is a potential for something from the past. Remember, it's like we're revisiting March, June of last year. Something to do with a, a, an offer for a, a, a potential meeting, intimate meeting, secretive meeting. Someone that's very secretive, going through a, a metamorphosis, a purification process where their romantic life is concerned. I see a lot of desire and a lot of passion here. We see a divine masculine that's ready. They come through as very courageous. A strong fire, strong fire. So all fire signs, obviously. Someone, a divine masculine that's ready to, um, that's very courageous and ready to take action. I do get a little bit of, I, a lot of passion, possibly also a bit of anger, 
uh, a lot of wheel drive, very Mars, martial, with Mars moving through Capricorn. And possibly also someone clearing the air, um, coming through as very truthful about things that they've, burdens they've been carrying, decisions that they needed to make, possible separation, could be uh, to do with family, family business. But the scythe is quick and hasty cutting out. Breakthroughs, challenging breakthroughs. Um, there is the star, which is the Aquarius energy. Cutting out the poison, cutting out the secrecy, um, opening up. Yeah, a lot of emotions, a lot of secret emotions, things that have been very hidden. Let's see emotionally where we possibly are at this time, where our subconscious is concerned. Lessons, someone is an open book. This is Pisces energy. Big dreams, something that was hidden will be revealed. There will be communication, um, possibly also communication that um, maybe you felt um, in your, through your higher self, but you didn't believe that this could materialize. Um, a lot to do with hidden things. Pay attention to your dreams as well. There's been some sort of a lesson, a lesson about um, seeing through um, seeing through things through a romantic perspective, a um, trusting eye, possibly as well. Yeah, there's the forgiveness. You see, there's the forgiveness coming from a masculine archetype figure. Maybe someone's asking for forgiveness pertaining to holding back on their secrets, some secrets, some deception. Something's being found out here. We've got very strong Piscean energies. We've got a fresh start, so there is an opportunity, right? We've got the metamorphosis, very Scorpio. Scorpio Taurus, I would say, and winter. Well, in the Northern Hemisphere, this could be a timing card, but this could also be a divine masculine going through a shadow phase, um, very uh, Scorpio, um, very dark, a, a winter, like a wintry energy, or it could be just a timing card where we now get to see like the sprouting um, pay attention to your environment as well. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, spring, there will be um, some trees uh, will be blooming. Um, so this is very much the potential um, physically and metaphorically, I'm going to say, an opportunity for blooming. And we see like the metamorphosis and this could also be someone opening up and speaking about their shadow, a shadow phase that they've been through. A dark night of the soul could be as well. What is that winter? Action C, communication and twin flame, unbelievable. We've got healing. Wow, everyone, goosebumps. And we've got communication, lots of telepathic communication, physical communication um someone a divine masculine has seen things from a higher perspective or is seeing things from a higher perspective possibly in winter time or they've just been going through a winter wintry phase just like the hermit let's see what's going on and maybe from the virgo season last year so from autumn winter Let's see. Let's see what the divine message is. Message in a bottle. The divine message is message in a bottle. A lot of water. 
Number 15, um, Capricorn, the devil. So we see the stalk here, and stalks, of course, bring you cycles. Let's read the message in a bottle, number 15. Communication, a sign, a cledon, the ancient name for a spontaneous oracle delivered innocently by the speaker, pointing the way to your highest good. Spirit sends you signs when you ask for them, when you believe you will receive them, and when you allow yourself to become fluent in the language of symbols, oracles, and omens. They may come to you as a bird flying by. There is the bird. Let me just close that door. It's like we're ready for takeoff, everyone. Ready to be airborne, the Aquarius season. Aquarius does speak to flights, aviation. I don't know why I needed to tell you that. Agapi's in the room. Agapi. Hello, Agapi. Hello, Agapi. Oh, Agapi's ready for bed. Hi, Mum, I'm here, but I'm wanting to have a nap, so leave me alone. Okay, Agapi. They may come to you as a bird flying by, a logo on a truck, and a song on the radio. Expect confirmation that you're pointed in the right direction. Keep your ears open for someone might say just the right thing that will give you the answer to your query. Remember what I was talking about with that, those three of cups? Pay attention, you're gonna hear something from someone that's gonna trigger and sort of give you some information. Today your message is this, spirit hears you and the reply is favorable. Now, where relationships are concerned, you can expect someone to favor you with positive news. This could be in the form of a letter, phone call, or email. You are the intended receiver of this message, so stay open to what you learn. Only good will come of it in the end. The signs are all there. What's beneath the star? Yeah, the well and the uh, clock timing chronos blockages where emotions are concerned until the star comes through and the star speaks to aquarius and aquarius is fixed air air is fast it's communication it's social media it is futuristic the star speaks to progression towards goals and a wish fulfillment but also possibly at a timely or physical distance for some. We have to go through the scythe energy before we can get to the star. Now the scythe is Pluto in Scorpio. So I'm going to say also because Mercury on Pluto can, spe can be ve very, very accidental. Take your time. Do not speed. Get your foot off the pedal. Don't rush. I know all planets are rushing direct. They're, you know, timing is coming in quickly. We feel as though, you know, there, are, there aren't enough hours in the day. But that could be accidental. Okay? Think, be present, and do things as things are happening now. All planets direct. Just take care. Relationships. You can expect someone to favor you with positive. Did I read this already? I did. <laughs> okay. Maybe someone needed to hear it again. You can expect someone to favor you with positive news. This could be in the form of a letter, phone call, or email. You are the intended receiver of this mes message. So stay open to what you learn. Only good will come of it in the end, which says it may be challenging, but only good will come of it. The signs are all there. Prosperity message. You are on target with your purpose and your passion. You are coming into alignment with your destiny and spirit wants you to know that you're on the right track. Expect a call, a new opportunity or a message from an old friend or business contact that will lead you closer to your dreams and greatest desires. Spirit has been listening to you. Beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. Now, obviously, huge dilemmas where twin flame connections are concerned. We do have the two of swords here. And I think I will take some Sabila's. Um, yeah, Sabila's on that. Because there's going to be a dilemma. What is the Two of Swords about? And I want to see what this Divine Masculine is all about. What is the Two of Swords? What's this decision? We've got Donna Maritata like the Empress, um, the mother, the nurturing mother. She's got, she may have children. Um, Donna Maritata is the Empress. Um, many times she could be the other person's partner as well. As an energy, she does speak to abundance, but possibly through sacrifice and release because she is a 12, 12 is Pisces. Right? Maybe she was also unconditionally loving and not receiving, who knows. But we've got via, the Voyager, Viaggio. This is someone coming in. This is like your knight in shining armor. Something is changing. There's action being taken. It's the Three of Wands. It's like something that we've been waiting on or there was a decision about movement, travel, um, a visit, decisions about maybe also because of a dilemma it could be speak to someone being in two different relationships as well. I mean, the, vo the Viaggio does remind me of the Knight of Wands very much so. Could be the Knight of Cups, but I see more as the Knight of Wands, someone who's needing to cover ground. This could be a foreigner, someone coming in from a distant place, another state. But there's transition and there's change. It's like seeing those ships on the horizon because of the Three of Wands. And we've got the Militare. It's like for this to happen, something needs to be closed. The Militare is the Ten of Swords. And of course, the Ten of Swords is the end of suffering. It's also uh, speaks to a lot of secrecy, right? Possible betrayal. The Militare is also very Capricorn. It's like being on a mission. Being on a mission, even though it's backbreaking, it's difficult. There's a lot of secrecy which will possibly be revealed. Remember, Ten of Swords turns into the Ace of Swords, which could be a double-edged sword. Let's take one more on the Militare. And we've got the Ace of Pentacles and the Stanza, the news that comes in. Information that was secretive, things going on behind closed doors, uh, betrayal uh, pertaining to an intimate connection, possibly third party. It's the Ace of Pentacles, which is also up here. But it's possibly, it's good news, I would say, more than likely, what has turned over. We've got the Ace of Pentacles, the Denaro, the secret, um, what am I saying, the safe, the safe, um, the abundance, Six of Cups, soulmate connection, nostalgia to do with the past, but also the secrets that will be revealed have got a lot to do with finances, resources, Possibly also a marriage for the wrong reasons. Marriage for the abundance, for the security. That could be the secret that comes through. Someone marrying for the wrong reasons. But also the good news that comes through could be an opportunity. Remember what it said about collaboration, finances. Something to do with the past. Um, an old um, connection. It's got something to do with security and the possible Ace of Pentacles. The, the opportunity comes through here. There is an offering here for financial security, a possible new beginning, um, and an advantageous contract, marriage, or business that does stem from the past. Let's see. So remember what the messages were saying. News will come in that will turn out well in the end. 
So there will be some challenges, but it will be very promising. Let's look at this divine masculine. We've got distrust, domestic or someone that's close to your environment, close to a home. This is the butler, supposedly someone that's helping, but they're doing things for their own benefit. Um, delirante, delirious, silly actions, nine of pentacles. Nine of pentacles, uh, someone that's very free spirited, very, they know their worth, but obviously there's something silly uh, pertaining to, I don't know, frustration. This divine masculine has gone out uh, drinking, uh, I don't know, taking some sort of substance uh, and therefore doing something silly, something that they regret. Um, or someone is, this divine masculine could be someone that's celebrating their singlehood, going out drinking um, and letting loose. And this could also be someone that was not ready to reveal things because of distrust concerning their personal life. They were hiding things which I feel with the sacerdote are now going to reveal because the sacerdote is the 13 which is Scorpio. It's the death card. This is the divine masculine talking about what they were going through. And I feel that this will be positive news concerning a twin flame connection. Someone's seen and I feel that it's this divine masculine. They've had that wider perspective. They've become all the more wise. They've seen the light. And now there is a possibility for healing. My God, what a reading this was. Message in a bottle. Wow. Wow. And the revelations will come through from Taurus. Uranus is going to connect with Venus. Um Uranus is going to connect, uh, is already now connecting in a beautiful trine with Venus. Mars has passed already, has trined Uranus through to Taurus already from Capricorn. But Venus is connecting now. Expect unexpected news, which could be quite cutting, but it will be very freeing. Very, will bring you great awareness of big changes that are promised. And that is through disclosure, through getting intimate, through communication as well. Getting the intimate information, the information that was hidden, right? As to the future. Right now, the sun is in a beautiful sextile 60 degree angle over to Chiron and the North Node. So we've been working through this open wound. I talked to so many people. It's just been so hard for everyone. Believe you me, if you've been in a huge wound, feeling as though um, nothing's going to come of this, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, you're not the only one, okay? So there is potential now. It's like we've got a yod pointing to, pointing to Juno and to Lilith through Virgo. The injustices will be made right. The resolutions will be found. But Juno needs to, remember, retrograde and then move direct. So we're not all on the same timeline. So the blessings, the message in a bottle is not going to happen for all of you. At the same time, energetically, yes, it will. Okay? If you're interested in a personal reading because this is a general reading, remember that. General um, message is Eight of Cups. Emotionally checking out where we haven't found our bliss, our happiness. And there's also, there was fear of emotionally checking out. I feel that we're overcoming that fear now because Pluto, remember, is the psyche. Pluto is being activated. Pluto is at that zero degrees, which speaks to endings and new beginnings. And a metamorphosis, surely. Right? And what was I saying? <laughs> I forgot. 
yes, if you're interested in a personal reading, then um, do reach out. And look out for the, because I'll be doing um, on Patreon, we're doing Twin Flame um, Soulmate readings for each sign. They're not going to be long readings. We usually do the collective every Wednesday, but we'll be doing now, next couple of days, I'll be working on those. So you can purchase a one-off through our website or join us on Patreon so that you can get the 12 different signs to see what's going on with your twin flame, with that karmic relationship, with that soulmate connection. Remember, soulmates can be brothers, sisters, friends, uh, mother, father connections. So you can always look at those twin flame readings as from the perspective of not love in a romantic way, but more so um, because love comes in many, many different forms, right? So... All right, we'll see what this new seed is, this new moon in Aquarius, which is going to be wow. It's going to have a wow factor for all of us. And uh, we'll be doing that analysis too. Um, today, tomorrow, for those of you that are on Patreon, on Tier 2 and Tier 3. So look out for that. And I think I will leave you. I'd love to um, hear from you. Thank you so much for everything that you do for the channel, for liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. And um, what else can I say? Let life show us the way. Hmm? Let life point us the way because at this time, astrologically speaking, for the whole of February, many relationships are going to leave our lives and many are going to... Uh, you know, those relationships that are, have a backbone will last. The, those that do not um, will leave us. So it's a brand new era that is opening up, my dear friends. Um, and obviously for you and your personal birth chart, this is very important. Um, February is going to be a very important time. So maybe um, you may want to uh, look at your astrology and how the transiting planets are affecting you. Anyway... We've got St. Valentine, you know, uh, we're celebrating love relationships in the next few days, but we're going to have a difficult aspect on that day. So remember that difficult aspects that are challenging, it's like clearing out the, the, the rubbish, the trash, right? And le leaving, leaving what will hold. It's like taking off those, those, um, dead weight those dead layers the scorpio energy right like the um like the phoenix rising so whatever is going to be cleared out right now will bring that you know that newness that rebirth so it's going to be a very different saint valentine's day this year and i would say that uh, having valentine's day um in the aquarius season is a bit um is not such a good idea because of the Aquarius uh, energy. Aquarius is more, you know, it's the mind. It's not so much the emotion. Pisces would have, uh, the Pisces season would have been the perfect St. Valentine's uh, time to celebrate. But remember that just because the 14th of February is St. Valentine's Day, it doesn't mean that we have to show our love only on the day. Every day should be. Uh, St. Valentine's Day, all right? So keep that in mind. Love and light, dear friends. Thank you for connecting with me and I uh, hope you've had a wonderful weekend. It was okay. It was okay for me. Very, very busy indeed. Very busy. A lot of cleaning out the clutter, cleaning out the trash, personally, physically. I'd love to hear from you and what you've been up to. Stay tuned, everyone. Sending you lots of love. I will be back. Love you lots.